everything pretty much ends to you know or starts so, that, so it looks scripted the year looks scripted it does look scripted yes so i mean everything and as a matter of fact even in 2003 the new york times reported uh that there was some Ebola vaccine a testing oh, I going remember. on in 2003. Well, when, Bill, when I saw Bill Gates' name back then, I said, look out, here comes Ebola on air. Right. I mean, it's just pure evil. So it's not like, you know, they haven't been testing Ebola vaccines. They've been testing Ebola vaccines and owned the patent on, on Ebola strains for a long time. You know, and they prepared us with movies like Outbreak and Ebola and all these 28 Days Later and all the zombie movies and all this other stuff. So, you know, it's conditioning of the mind and then seeing how far we're going to take it, you know, doing test runs. Yeah, because they're clearly trying to have plausible deniability with open borders and the planes still come in. They clearly want it to spread. Right. I mean, there's no debating that now. But they're always going to test every, you know, they always test everything in these African countries because, you know, these are poor families, these poor environments. No one's ever, you know, there's not a lot of media over there. It's not going to get out. It's kind of secretive. It's like testing. You know. It's like giving black people syphilis. Nobody will believe if they complain. Just shoot them up. Just, you know, just. Right. And a lot of the testing goes on, you know, back in the jungles in Africa, you know, the originally with. That's the, where the Pentagon's got the testing facilities. Right. The HIV testing a long time ago and the AIDS virus and all that stuff and Ebola, all that's usually tested in these jungles in somewhere in Africa. Uh, something tells me we're not going to hear about this from Al Sharpton, though. He's too busy race pimping. Well, uh, to Jesse try Jackson's to help. talking about it, so. Oh, Jesse Jackson says it's racist that this guy didn't get treatment. No, that's what hospitals do now. They just turn you away. Well, the thing is, all of our hospitals are already full anyway with all the degenerative diseases and the flu-like symptoms. I mean, and now people, you know, especially around Dallas and, and, and all throughout the United States because of Ebola, if they get a cough and a respiratory uh, situation, which is actually going around now because of all the, the contaminated vaccines. vaccines, you know, how do you, you know, there, there's no room in any hospitals right now anyway. If the, if the Ebola thing takes on and it starts to become a real pandemic and people start coming down with it, there are no hospitals to go to, people. There's, you know. This is crazy. Let's go to call. camps. I mean. Let's talk to Karen in Florida. Well, what's wrong with the camp? Don't be racist. Karen, you're on the air. Welcome. Right. It's, it's, it's not a camp. It's just a, a care center. <laughs> it's Hello? loving. It's not a death panel. It's a loving. Uh, yes, go ahead. Oh, hi there, Mr. Jones. Welcome. We're five five year listeners, and I just wanted to let you know that we also have the nascent iodine, the oxy powder, and we also bought the water system. Well, thank you, because that funds our operation and their quality products. Thank you, ma'am. Totally awesome. And uh, what we wanted to know is. Um, the gloves for money. We know that uh, the American dollar travels all over the place. And we're starting to wonder when would be a good time to start using gloves for cash or, you know, what are we going to do in a case like that? And also well, I think that's a good point. If it really starts spreading, you wear a mask and gloves. But wouldn't the Ebola down a few minutes on money? I think you're talking about somebody who has it, sneezing on it or having it in their hand, passing it to you at the register. Right, Dr. Group? You know, that's a, uh, that's a good question. And there's a lot of uh, controversy out there right now. It's one, one of the things we're trying to figure out is how long does the Ebola virus live in fluids, like let's say, for example, you go to an ATM machine and you have the Ebola virus. Well, your body fluids are going to touch the the uh, little pad, the keypad on there. How long will it live? Well, there's a lot of different factors. You know, is it going to be in contact with direct sunlight? Because if it's in contact with direct sunlight, it'll probably kill the virus. The money right now, you know, the reports from scientists that I've talked to are coming back saying anywhere from five to 20 days, up to 70 days, what you were talking about, that the Ebola virus can live in bodily fluids outside the body. Now, we're coming up on winter, too. So if you, you know, since you're in winter, since a lot of places there's not as, as much sunlight, it's natural that people's immune systems go down over the winter months. They're not exercising. They're eating Thanksgiving meals. You know, they're eating more sugary things. That vitamin D, B12? Uh, they're lacking B12, they're lacking vitamin D, you know. So, you know, it's a perfect storm, really, when you think about it, because all these things are coming together at once at around the same time. So as far as, I, I don't have an accurate answer, but I can tell you that I would just say 
that the Ebola virus could possibly live in fluids outside if it's not in direct sunlight. Sure, they're saying it may be going airborne. We have right, right, we don't know, ma'am. We'll yeah. try to figure that out, but it's it's definitely serious because the government is like trying to aid and abet it, basically. And by the way, they do make gloves that have that are made. Hold on, we gotta go to break. We gotta go to break. We're gonna go back with Jay and others. Storing thousands of airtight coffin liners in Georgia that they basically call mass cremation devices. We have all the documents on that. This is what the CDC is out currently buying right now. I remember I did a TV show with Jesse Ventura about that. We probably need to add that video. Just it's the, um, you know, Georgia coffin episode. I forget the exact name. We should probably add that to it. But uh, right now, let's go to your phone calls. Jay in Delaware, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello. Yep. Hey, how you doing? Uh, thank you, Alex and Dr. Brew, for your dedication. Thank you, brother. It's an honor. Um, my question is for Dr. Group, and I'll take my answer off the air if I'm at work. Um, what would you, what supplemental re re regimen would you recommend for someone who has hepatitis who does not want to do the interferon treatment? Well, what I would recommend is you find a good doctor in your area, maybe somebody that has experience with uh, different types of IV bags, ozone, um, ultraviolet blood irritation, uh, somebody that can work with you that has experience in, you know, utilizing some of those compounds. Uh, my personal experience, you know, just some of the things that uh, we've used to help support people with hepatitis R, oregano, a silver, iodine. Um, I'm not saying that that's, you know, obviously I can't state anything, you know, that would work on any disease because I've already been, you know, raided and almost arrested and thrown in jail for making claims. But uh, those are things, uh, it can definitely be worked on effectively if you find the right doctor in your area, no doubt about it. And the interferon that they give, they give in such high doses that it's, it's really not, it can actually be damaging to the body. Uh, there was a company in Switzerland that was producing a low level interferon product that we used to use with some really good success. But uh, another thing out there that you might want to look at is called MMS, it's a miracle mineral supplement, and read up on that as well. And again, though, I mean, no, no doctor can sit there over the air and specifically diagnose somebody. You gotta do tests, gotta look at them, but. Um, Thank you so much, caller. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Anonymous in Oklahoma. You're on the air. Hello, gentlemen. How are we doing today? Good, brother. Thanks for calling. Hey, uh, i got two things for you. I've got a source that works at the hospital here in Oklahoma City that they uh, recently, I heard you speak about earlier, saying that they were being tested for uh, the Ebola virus. Yes, sir. That's well, in uh, CBS News. Report Oklahoma City Hospital isolates patient exhibiting possible Ebola symptoms. Go ahead. Uh, my source on the inside says that uh, she worked. They worked there in, in admitting there and said that they have uh, this individual has been uh, tested. It came back negative. Good. She's under under a psych evaluation because this individual had said that uh, she was exposed, had uh, intercourse with an individual who was who had thought they had Ebola, and they took no. Uh, they didn't take any precautions. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of craziness that comes out of the scare as well. Exactly, and also one more thing, Alex. You know how you've talked in the past about how they project what they're going to do before they do it, whether yes. they do it in movies, films, you know, uh, the pain in Colorado and the airport there. I don't know if you guys have been watching this. It's a show on FXX called The Strain. Uh, it is a new take on a uh, vampire story by Guillermo del Toro. He's doing it. The symptoms of these people when they're infected by this vampire, they uh, have muscle spasms and their eyes turn red. The CDC is involved in this show. They are completely incompetent. There's one individual in the in the in the storyline who has seen what's happened. He's trying to wake other people up, and they've basically said he's killed people, and they've tried to turn the media against him in this show. And it's basically projecting 101. I mean, it is it's spooky how the similarities are, and this whole storyline takes place in New York City. Looks like a pretty scary show. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, let's talk to Peter in Washington. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Dr. Group. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Hi, Peter. You, you can hear me. Um, I, I buy uh, your product, and I wanted to ask about a couple of other products that I take, if you don't mind, okay? Yeah, we're not uh, screening your call, bro. You're, you're on air. Yeah, uh, TA65. What do you think of it? 
Uh, TA65, I, I think it's a great product. I mean, it's one of those products that has a lot of research behind it. It's, a, it's for those people out there that don't know what it is. It's a very expensive product that increases, that's been shown to increase telomere length. And, you know, that's that's part of the anti-aging mechanism. Isn't that what DNA Force and does? That's, and that's what DNA Force, well, DNA Force is designed to prevent cellular damage, which leads to telomere shortening. Uh. All right, it's an nutraceutical. Stay there, caller. Finish your question when we come back. We're on the mark.